really a nice showing today, actually. And thank you all for coming out to Convergence and visiting our booths over in the Expo Hall. I, I know it's a trek for some of you. Um, it's also good to see some familiar faces, some from Barcelona, some from last year's Atlanta Convergence. Um, it's a real pleasure having everyone coming and, and particularly coming to my presentation. So my name is Brian Tubb. I'm a solution architect at Paratrip, so I'm a subject matter expert. I focus on deliveries as well as scoping for integrations with Paratrip, as well as getting the most for your money and getting the customers, making sure they're happy and they get everything they can out of our product. Today we'll be talking about capabilities of Paratrip, some of the base capabilities as well as some of the tools we have for developers or integrators that lets you extend the, the product to satisfy pretty much every scenario that we can, we can possibly handle out there. Um, we work hand in hand with uh, CRM. I don't know if everyone knows exactly what Paratrip is, but it's a custom, customer support software. We were purchased back uh, almost last year, right before Convergence. Um, so we've been part of the Microsoft family for a year now, and I'm, I'm happy to say there's been incredible benefits being part of um, under the fold. First, a little bit of context. Last year, back in January, I had been part of Paratrip for about two months, and I came in one day to an all-hands meeting, and they said, welcome to Microsoft. So that was a bit of a shock. I'd gone from Paratrip, a small company of about 100 people, to a company now of over 100,000. And in two months, they were asking, or the, the bosses on high were asking for, okay, show how Paratrip and Dynamic CRM work together to form a cohesive unit. And I was, I was green at the time. I was just getting started. I was getting to learn how Paratrip worked. And then now I was dumped in and learning how Dynamic CRM was working. And it was an interesting compare and contrast scenario. So I was working on some of the integrations that were shown at the keynote. And that was a really interesting two-month period, learning about both products, comparing and contrasting, and getting to see how they truly do work together and complement each other. The integrations shown at the keynote were chat within USD, as well as knowledge base within USD and a, a case integration. I worked on a lot of those initial proof of concepts, and I've also delivered some of these to customers over the last year as they've formalized. Plus, we're starting to see how our products integrate on a core product level. So I'm, I'm an integrator. I'm not a, a, a guy that gets to sit in the back room and talk to the bosses and say, this is exactly what we're doing in our core product roadmap. But I get to suggest that. I get to talk to my bosses, and I get to say, you know what, this is what our customers want because I talk to the customers. I know exactly what they're, they're trying to aim for because that's what I get asked to do every couple weeks. So it was a couple, couple month period where we were scrambling for, for creating these demos. We learned a lot in the period. We learned where we had areas where we needed to improve. We learned where Paratrip was extremely complimentary for CRM. And we got to see how our customers were saying, how, how, does, this, how does this work? Because everyone was asking, how does Paratrip work with Dynamics? And that was something we were figuring out at the time, too. It had only been a couple weeks. And there was an expectation that we had an integration plan that was already in place. So we took two of our, our biggest assets, knowledge base, self-service, and, and portal. And over the last year, we've been integrating into a cohesive unit. And it all started at convergence of last year. So everyone that was there last year, this should look familiar. And luckily, the demo went off without a, without a hitch, so I'm still here. This presentation is primarily focused on you guys, developers, integrators, technical users of our product. People that are also interested, too, may want to know, OK, where are we going with the product? We have a roadmap presentation um, by our, our PM, Steve Klein. Uh, I believe that's today or tomorrow. Um, and he'll go over exactly where we're, we're integrating the products from a core roadmap perspective. But today, I'm going to focus on how I did some of the things we did for convergence. It's a little bit of a solution architecture 101 training. After you come out of this, you'll, you'll feel more comfortable talking to people like me and saying, oh, how are you using the core, the core components of an integration to extend your product? Is it supported? Is it not supported? How do you handle security? How are you, how are you accessing the APIs, et cetera, et cetera? And you'll feel more comfortable, even if you're not the one doing it. So I want everyone to, if, if you have any questions, um, basically feel free to stop me, throw your hand up in the air. You'll give me a break for a second. 
and I'd, I'd love to answer questions because this is a, a back and forth. This is not an end discussion at the end of the day. I'll be around Convergence and I'm gonna be happy to answer any questions. We'll also be showing some of the other tools and resources you'll have. So when I'm not here, when Convergence wraps up, we'll be able to sit and you'll be able to reach out to us through our own software. That'll be one of our, that's one of our greatest assets and we make very heavy use of it. So I'll give you some links at the end too where you can reach out as well as contact over Yammer. We, we're very active with customers that have used CRM as well as partners as well as other, other teams within Microsoft. We love working with you all. So you'll come out of today with some, some takeaways. Key capabilities, what's supported, what's not supported. You'll also understand, oh, okay, from, from this technical level, because we will be talking a little bit technically, what am, I, what am I doing? Why am I doing this work to, to integrate pieces? Or how am, I, how am I doing it in the first place? And we have some customers, some very, very happy customers that you may have already seen. Um, that's, that's Intellos, Chobani, Business USA, Metro Bank, and many more that are going to be coming over the next year that, that you can go ask yourselves and say, how, how did this work? How are, you, are you happy? Are you not happy? What's going on? And I'm, I'm really happy to say that they've, they have stood up for us over convergence when they've been sitting at the user groups and discussing with everyone, especially with some of the, the, the really good questions you have. There's four components. There's probably a couple more that can fit into it different bins, but these are the major ones I look at when I'm doing an integration. And I want you to keep this in mind while, while I'm going through the presentation, because it fits into data access for APIs, single sign-on, so I, I lump in security into that as well, because those are extremely important components of an integration, or just interoperating. No, no company out there has only one software solution. They have a multitude of pieces of software that are all working together from different vendors. So ultimately, you just want to get a functional project done. You want to make sure your agents are working effectively. You want to make sure your customers are happy. And the pieces of software you use, whether that's Microsoft or not, need to be secure. They need to work well together. We have some nice benefits through widgets, tabs, and hosting. So I'll talk about that briefly towards the end. That's primarily extending things like our service desk, and this is very similar in CRM to, you can use iframes, but we actually do some of the hosting for you as well. So this is, we're entirely a software, uh, a SaaS solution. So this is a really, really nice, we're, we're a really good product for companies that wanna get moving lickety-split. And then at the end, portal engage, or customer engagement, using our, our portal. Everyone's probably seen it by now. I'll show a couple examples of what it looks like with our customers that are implementing it today. But, Customer engagement, we're gonna make sure the cu your customers are happy. We're not just making sure you're happy that your agents are enabled, it, it's the customers. You'll see this later today if you go to Duke Chung or any of the other presentations, we're pushing this very heavily. It's a feedback loop. Working with your customers is a feedback loop. You enable your agents, you empower your employees, that feeds back, you drive consistency, that engages your customers, so they now feel more engaged and they feel like they have a real helping hand rather than talking to a black hole. And then you're able to measure the impact and look at analytics and reporting and say, okay, what did we hit? What did we, what did we miss? And how are we actually doing? And that feeds right back into employees saying, you know what, <laughs> Some, I wanna do less work. Let's do a better job. Let's, let's work together as a company and provide a consistent experience again. So it feeds back and the customers are even happier and need less and less, well, not help, but they lead less and less engagement directly from an agent. Let's talk about a couple applications. Chobani. Chobani was one of the bigger companies that we had come on over the last several months. It was approximately a six month rollout. It was perhaps one of the best teams I've ever worked with too. That is a shout out if any of the Chobani folk are here. On the left is Shabani's main website. When they came to us originally, their goals were we need to actually engage our customers better. Shabani has one of the most positive experiences and uh, interfaces to their customers. It, is, it almost makes me wanna cry looking at any ticket or any interaction they have with their customers because it's like 95% positive. I mean, that's helpful when you're dealing with yogurt and an excellent product, 
but they still wanted to go that extra step further. And I think that's indicative of their team being so, so incredibly smart and privy to the fact that they need to reach out to their customers better. And that was where they came to us. They said, you know, we, they already use CRM. They use Dynamic CRM, they use AX for tracking their products. But primarily they were doing all email and phone interactions with their customers. That's effective, but sometimes customers want to get help themselves. And it was also time consuming because agents would have to go back and forth many, many times with the customer. Okay, do you have a cup, what cup of yogurt had a problem? Or okay, you want a donation request. It was really hard to bin that. So the agents are manually typing all of this in and they're manu manually collecting all of the contact information for their customers too. And that's a time consuming process and that requires one person per customer talking on the phone. So on the right is our portal. This is the first thing they wanted. They said, you know, we, we need a portal. We need to be able to get some information out there for customers with, uh, with some basic facts, essentially. And this was actually huge for me because my, my fiance is celiac. She can't have gluten. And that was one of those, those pieces I, I'd never even thought of. What, is Chobani gluten-free or not? And it was actually right on their portal in one of the, uh, one of the knowledge base articles. I started searching and I saw, oh, gluten-free. That's really cool. Something I know about Chobani now that I didn't know before just by working on their product, I wasn't even actively searching it. They wanted to go a step further though. And this is where we really shine. We have a very flexible portal. As you saw previously, it, one looks like Chobani's main website. So when customers are moved over from the main website, when they're asking for help, they don't feel like they're going somewhere else and suddenly a jarring experience occurs and they said, this is, this is some, is it, is it outsourced? What's going on? Who's actually helping me? No, they have Chobani's CSRs, the tier one support, working in the background within Parature to help out the customer. And we enabled them really quickly. You'll see right here a bunch of information. I, I'm not showing all of it because it's a little bit longer of a form, but it asks for customer information before this, and then it shows a bunch of information about a, a, a cup of yogurt. So if you had a problem, if you go to care.chobani.com right now on your mobile phone or your desktop or laptop or whatever, you'll see a well-formatted form that has field specific to Bonnie's scenario. The top several right there are information about cups of yogurt. And at the bottom, the customer can submit up to five cups of yogurt saying, you know, I had problems. This is where I bought it. I brought it at X company's a grocery store and it was bad, it was expired. This information feeds back into Dynamic CRM. And I'll show exactly what that looks like in a second, but this is a way to have your customers helping you out. And they, they feel happier doing that too. They get a much more rapid response. You may only have one or two interactions back and forth with the customer because they already gave you all the information you want. They may have given you a code on the yogurt cup that you already know how to track back to AX. And you know where it came from and you know who is submitting this ticket. This should give you a little bit of teaser when we, when we start getting into the technical side, why, why the technical is very important. Everything is basically all the tier ones living within Parature, and it's moving over to CRM. The agents didn't have to go learn, learn an entirely new system. They're still living within CRM. That's, that's their tier two, as well as their follow-up teams. So they have a full process that they had internally within their company saying, how do, we, how do we handle and track? How do we use AX? How do we use Dynamics? How do we use the workflows that we've had for, for years? Without, we want the benefits of Parature. We also want... We, we, wanna, we wanna have our cup of yogurt and eat it too. So we have accounts, contacts, notes and attachments, all the interactions, whatever customers are talking to within Parature, the CSRs for the tier one support team, that information moves over to CRM. Another example, Intellos. I had the pleasure of going to speech training with Pete from Intellos. He's, he's basically the guy that, that let it up from the Intello side. And it was one of the most jarring experiences learning how he had been at IBM for several years. That was where he first started. They have an excellent knowledge base. I can't speak highly of it enough. But he moved over to Intellos and he realized we, are, we don't have a knowledge base. We don't have a way to, to build up our employees to keep track of this information. When he was at IBM, the first call he got on the phone with was with American Express. They asked him questions he had no idea the answer to, but they had a knowledge base, and he as an agent was able to help out the customer just as customers can now help themselves out. So when he moved over, that was one of his, his, his biggest requests was how do, we, how do we make sure we keep consistent knowledge across the channels 
How do we make sure customers get a consistent experience when they're dealing with agents? Because you're, you're only as happy with a company as, as the consistency of experience you get. If it's a grab bag where you call and you go, oh, suddenly half the time I don't know what quality experience I'm gonna get, that's a scary, terrifying thought. So when they came to us, again, we modeled their website, um, our, our website based off of theirs. We're doing all the hosting for the portal. We have a domain mass, so it looks just like it's, I think it's support.intellis.com. Uh, I have it on the next slide. But they have knowledge right there, exactly what Pete was asking for. We also took it a step further, too. Just like Chomani, they have CRM, and they don't want to necessarily leave. There's a lot of power within CRM, particularly from workflows, and you get some institutional momentum going. You don't want to change an entire team. So instead of Pete basically sticking his neck out and changing to an entirely different system, they have a form that now goes directly to CRM. All cases go directly to CRM, and it's customized. It's based off of full name, email, phone number, and then there's a CAPTCHA. So these are things that he asked for and, and he got, no problems. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit of a teaser for, okay, why, why work with our APS? Why work with Pear Tree? Why look at us as, as part of the platform of, of customer service at Microsoft? We'll start digging into some of the technical regions now. APIs, serv or, um, security, et cetera. After each of the different sections, I'll ask if anyone has any questions, feel free to shout them out midway through too. I don't, I don't mind hecklers. First up, what API do we have? I don't, I don't know if anyone's worked with Paratrue before. Actually, does anyone have Paratrue here right now? Have you worked with our APIs before? Okay, good, you'll like these slides and this may seem like a refresher. For the rest of you, I'm, I'm gonna make this as distilled down as easy for you as possible. We also have an SDK too that's with C Sharp, so we, we do as much as we can to help all the teams out when they work with us. Our API is really darn easy. It's REST-based. This is real, real simple stuff. You can go into your browser and you can, you can make an API request just by typing in your host name. So if you're on S5, which is one of our farms, .com, you put in your account ID, your department ID, and then whatever you want to retrieve. Account, contact, CSR, chat, et cetera. We have an API specification doc too on our support site. And I'll show what the support site link is later. But we use XML and JSON, nice and standard. Pretty much all the tools in all languages will work with our API. In 15.1, we also introduced cross-origin resource sharing. So we now have the ability to make API requests across domains. And this works very handily with SSO, single sign-on, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And authentication is token-based. So what do we support? These are all the modules within Paratrue Knowledge Base, download, account, customer, or contact, products and assets, tickets, chat, CSR. We support, we're, we're working towards parity between the service desk and our APIs. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting really, really darn close. You can read, you can get any sort of information from the service desk you want about your information. If you're doing reporting or if you just want to retrieve it for data display, all available. Create, update, delete, pretty much all there too. We don't have workflows yet except for tickets. And then we have metadata so you can retrieve information about your, your system schema. And with 15.1, there's, there's some extra benefits and it's a little hard to show in a multi-dimensional table in a single slide, but we have dynamic translation for knowledge base. So if you have a single knowledge base article, it can be translated across different languages. That's also retrievable via, via the API. And we also have more coming in our next release. So we have, we have a lot of work ahead of us that we're, we're actively providing every six months, which is our release cadence now. For a web dev, this should seem pretty familiar. You got create, update, retrieve, list, delete, and schema. Just how do you deal with the system? And all, all different types of operations are basic REST. Get, post, put, delete. Again, XML, JSON, work directly with pretty much any language out there. I don't know of any languages that don't support some level of XML or JSON. So we have, we have everyone pretty well covered. Let's go through a couple of quick examples. What, what does this look like? 
Um, this is for future posterity as well as now. You may not remember everything after we get out of the presentation, but if you have any questions, you can also reach out to us and we can always help you out with the APIs. As I said before, XML, we're retrieving basic pieces of information just like CRM, this should look very familiar. We show number of results, it's paginated. You've got the URL for where you can retrieve more information about certain pieces of data. And then you have the results within nested XML. And, and JSON looks very similar, but I'm gonna focus on the more supported interface, which is XML. And again, how to do it is you just perform a get. A get is, for those that don't know, it's whenever you type in anything into a browser, that's a get. You're just retrieving information from our website. And you'll get something that looks like on the left if, if you actually type in a URL like so at the top. Okay, what, is, what does the data look like? What am I getting back? You have unique IDs. We have service desk URLs for if you want references to it from a direct link. We also have um, fields for every single entity. So, okay, what is static fields, custom fields? Anything that you add, it's retrieved. We have data types that are returned. So there's, there's a lot I can go into here. I'm not gonna bore people. But basically we return pretty much everything from the service desk that's available. Is it options, what options are available for different fields, what attributes are there, et cetera. Difference between static and custom fields, not much. And this is what your data will look like. So for web dev, I read this nice and easily. May not be for everybody, but I guess I'm a little bit special in that way. We have IDs, display names, what it'll look like, localized, et cetera. This is very similar to CRM. And as I said before, if reading XML isn't your thing, and this isn't light reading for you, we have libraries, and you can always go work with a partner too, because this is, this is our bread and butter. Creation and update. So creation and update, again, very sim similar. You take the XML, you copy and modify a couple different fields. You can set email notifications and do workflow for some of the entities, like tickets. Say you wanted to add a comment to a ticket available through the API. Say you wanted to assign a ticket to one of your CSRs available through the API. And pretty, actually every single other workflow within tickets for Paratrure are available. And the server is pretty nice and intuitive. It tells you if you're doing something really bad or if it worked. Any questions on APIs before I get over to single sign-on? Um, let, me, let me repeat the question because it's probably a little hard for everyone else to hear. Uh, when a ticket is created through a post through our API, you're asking um, how does it end up within CRM? So right now, it's not being created directly within CRM yet. We, our databases aren't integrated, so there are, are integrations that would move tickets to CRM, and there would have to be some sort of field mapping. And that depends very heavily on the customer's use case. So for Jobani, for example, we are, once tickets reach a certain state, they're completed by the Tier 1 team. It's just a list of fields. We copy the values over, and I can even show you what, what the code looks like. It's, it's not too bad. And then for... Um, some of the integrations, we actually bypass tickets entirely, which is where the future is. We will have to create entities, the out-of-the-box case entity, directly within CRM. Any other questions for now before I move on? You can always ask questions after the presentation as well. Single sign-on. It's one of my favorite technologies. We're incredibly flexible with different single sign-on technologies, and it's one of the most often ignored technologies for companies that, are, that have their own product. Everyone's seen a similar flow to this. You go to log on to CRM or you go to log on to, to X company's website and then they redirect you to some different page, the one that would look like on the left. Go sign in. Okay, why did I go to a different website? Well, this creates a consistent experience so you don't have to sign on to every single service that Microsoft owns. So if you're in OneDrive and then you suddenly want to flip over to your calendar or Outlook, you don't have to log in again. Great user experience. It makes a, a whole boatload of difference so your customers don't have to remember 37 different passwords that expire at different times, like I do. We support single sign-on into our service desk and our portal. We use this today actually with, with Office, or excuse me, with uh, 
our commerce platform. So if you go suggest a trial or request a trial through for CRM, you can also request one for Parature. Works in the same way. You'll use the same login for CRM as you do for Parature to log into the service desk. So nice and simple, your agents don't have to know several different types of passwords. And our portal is very powerful on this too. An example of which, OneDrive. You may not know this, but we support OneDrive. That feedback form you see on the page is going from a OneDrive hosted site to a Parature portal. It's a little hard to display. Let me see if there's a laser, perfect. There's a little frame right here, and they're passing customer information about the customer to us. So you can't go in and, and submit information about other customers. It's cryptographically secure. We're using standard technology like SAML. They, they have some nuances, but it allowed us to enter a space that not every other alternative it, um, company can do. OneDrive didn't want to host anything. They're not, they're not hosting anything. They host their main website. From a security perspective, they don't have to deal with us integrating into their overall release platform. They just send them over to our site in an iframe, and then we handle the rest. But the data goes back to Parature. And then their CSRs, instead of, they, they used to go, this form looks identical to the one that was there before, which is why there probably wasn't a big jarring transition. All that data that you used to send feedback for, saying, hey, I need help, or I had problems, was going to a database somewhere, and then one of their DBAs was having to go in and, and query all that information. So the agents are now your developers, which is kind of a, something you don't want. Because just answering questions about the OneDrive product, doesn't, you don't want that to be your engineering team. They, they need to go work on the core product. So we now have separated that out for them, and their CSR is going to work within Parature, and effectively answer and work back and forth with the customer without any engineer having to go, okay, how do I go query the database for this information? Single sign-on is, in practical application, it can be very complicated due to just how web technologies work, but the whole process itself, conceptually, is really simple. You go from one website, the identity provider, to another website, service provider. You pass a bunch of information along, once they're authenticated, if they're not authenticated, you go right back to the beginning. So you'll see this with a majority of the websites out there. Yahoo, Google, Microsoft, we all do it. And it's, it's core technology that's been around for, for over a decade now. There's a lot of lingo for it, too. You'll see us use IDP or service provider or RP for WS Fed. And I'll show you exactly what we support in a couple more slides, but we support pretty much majority of the single sign-on solutions out there. So if you have, let me, let me simplify this, if you have a portal somewhere where your customer currently logs in, we can work with you to have them log into our portal too. So you don't have to worry about an entirely different authentication system. And this is an interesting application with some of our international partners we, or, or customers. They don't want to bring over any information over to Paratra outside of their own CRM on-prem database. They don't want to bring personally identifiable information, email, username, et cetera. What they'll bring over is a CRM GUID. We'll, we'll store no personally identifiable information, and single sign-on now allows us to correlate tickets back into CRM. What is, whose ticket is this? And then it's, it's a trivial thing to say, let's just copy a ticket over to CRM. And it, as time goes on, as we have more releases under our belt every six months, we get closer and closer to working the databases together so you don't even have to worry about it. For now, what can it do? Login, create, update customers. We can map fields, whatever you want to send over to us. So you're, you'll work with maybe your IT guy and say, okay, what do we want to know about this customer within Parature? It's nice and easy. We have a UI, we have documentation on it, or you can work with us or a partner on, on how this happens. You can log into the service desk or portal. And just as importantly, we can log you in from our portal to somewhere else. So we, we work with the one login team to, they'll log into us, and then we've logged into other customers' websites. It might be a forum or some other product that they have that's been around for a while. And we can, we can talk different languages, SAML, WS Fed, OAuth, and some other custom ones we use. Field mapping, what data we bring over, status, email, username, first, last name. Hugely helpful for customers that are like 
student organizations or, or schools or et cetera. They already have this entire infrastructure that's built out in their organization. We're not replacing it. We work with you. We work it with your current systems to make it a seamless transition from one product of yours that you already have implemented to another piece of infrastructure, which now becomes us. We are removing as much burden as we can from, from you and your team. So who's using this today? OneDrive, MetroBank. There's actually a couple hundred clients. But OneDrive, MetroBank. We also use it within our service desk widgets for security purposes. So some of the schools have customer information that doesn't need to be with us. It may be things like student um, financial aid information. We don't, we don't want that information. That's, that's not something we need. It's just a CSR agent needs to refer to it, and they get it. They don't have to worry about compromising and, and switching over to a different tab to see uh, which, which student has, has paid or not paid or has financial aid or doesn't have financial aid or where they live. None of that needs to live within Paratrue. We just bring over the bare minimum information we need just to correlate who is who. And now they, the agent is empowered. So if you refer back to that first slide, we help the employee. That helps the customer. Makes things quicker and faster in responses. So what do we support? A little bit of a technical slide again. SAML, different versions. WS Fed, we have some custom ones, uh, Open Token and Reference ID. We also integrate with Google, Facebook, Live ID. So if your customers use Facebook, I bet a couple of yours do. They can log in if you want them to. We support one login, Azure Active Directory as well. And oh, most importantly, identity provider, we can be we can, we can act as both roles. We can log you into somewhere else, or we can have you logged into Paratrip. And it doesn't really matter to us. We're very flexible. Any questions on single sign-on before I continue? Widgets. Widgets are, widgets are one of my favorite. They, they are a small feature that have massive impacts for our customers. We have simple widgets like our edit ticket widget. We have customers that when, cu when students come in, they want to be able to edit 37 different fields right off the bat. They don't want to switch between frames. They worry about that one or two button clicks extra. We're fast. We're really fast. We work with, with single forms that load within a quarter second so your CSRs aren't sitting there going, uh, I'm waiting for this to load. We're really quick, and we make it as easy for our customers to limit that, that time between actual work that's being done. And that's where widgets come in, where if you have really custom workflows, we, you can't have a one-size-fit-all solution that makes zero clicks for, or one click for everybody, because you all have different needs. Some of you may, be, you may work for a school. You may work for a call center. You may work for um, donation assistance. You may work for et cetera, et cetera. And there's different workflows for all of these. You may need to edit different fields where people call you separately and email you separately. And that's a totally different workflow across from, from another customer. So we don't want to just say, uh, we'll try to do it best across it, and that's it. That's where widgets come in. So for example, on the left, we have a ton of customers, probably well over 30, using our edit ticket widget. Just a simple, simple widget, but it lets you set dozens of fields simultaneously in one go. So OK, I want to edit what is here. You don't have to click into a totally different window. It's, it's just right there. Or another one. Say you actually track where your tickets are coming from because that's definitely something we can do. That'd be kind of nice to map it, right? OK, the map's right there. You can add that in. We're just using Bing, Bing Maps. And this is one of our technical sales professionals that, that whipped this up um, one night. Not too bad. And it works very similar, similarly for tabs. So tabs are, we, tabs are just basically the full screen. And they let you customize it. It's just like the ribbon interface for dynamic CRM. Heat map of tickets. So if you have tickets that actually do track the information of exactly where customers are coming from. Because we do store the IP address, so if you wanted to go look it up, you could. And now you can see, oh, wow, a bunch of people are submitting tickets from certain regions. Or we have customers that are international. We have customers that are in China that are submitting tickets that are different than those in India. Maybe we should work on the translation for our knowledge base articles, because evidently we're not satisfying a specific region. So we can put quite a 
basically different types of widgets, different types of tabs. You do or don't have to host. It depends on the type of tab. I'll show a little bit of, of what we do support. So HTML and JavaScript, you can just type it in directly. You don't have to host anything. Same domain access. That's where you can do things like uh, the, the Bing Maps. You don't even have to host anything, which is, which is a really nice, simple way where you don't have to go say, oh, I need a, a web host. If, if you have someone on your team that knows a little bit of JavaScript, or you want to talk to a partner and say, can you whip something up really quickly for me to have three button clicks less, or a timer that starts at a specific time that's different than anyone else, we can, we can handle that. Reporting. If you build reports, and I'll talk a little bit about reports later, uh, towards the end of the presentation, but if you have reports, you can have them display for you. So say you have a boss that doesn't answer tickets, but they want to come in and say, what's, what's going on? You can have a dashboard that pops up and says, oh, we had 37 escalations today versus 27 yesterday. OK, we're having a bit higher day. I need to call someone out extra in. Or if you want to host things externally, support that too. Just give us a URL. This is all customizable by the customer. So these aren't, these aren't things that you, OK, you have to ask Paratrooper to go do for you. It's available there. If you decide to add it one day, remove it the next, only have certain agents accessing different information, you can do that. And this is a, a big URL for one of the ones that we host. You can also do JavaScript, which I'll, I'll show in the next slide. But in C, we, we basically let you choose the location. So if you have different information that you want to display for tickets versus agents, or excuse me, versus accounts, or if you want different things to show up when you're creating a ticket versus just looking at a ticket, because there are very different use cases for walk-ins at schools versus uh, someone calling in, we support those. You can choose where widgets show up, and that's, that's again, a powerful solution that, that is very pretty trivial to add. This is a demo just showing what it looks like to add JavaScript and HTML. and what reporting may look like. We support graphs, 3D graphs, pie charts. You can make it as pretty as you want. This is just a quick demonstration on what a tab looks like with a report. So if you built a report, you can embed it within your system. So anyone that's not a report designer, which does have a different license, they can still see what's going on in their system. Your entire team can see the performance. And you can put this up. Um, one of my favorite things to do is put up a big TV in the room and say, Everybody, this is how we're doing today. This is where you can have a report that, that shows you. Oh, since last night, we had 37 escalations, or, or whatever number you're looking for. And our reporting does support everything our APIs support, and actually a little bit more. Any questions on, on service desk tabs and widgets? They're, they're pretty easy conceptually, but they have very large impacts for our customers. Even though they don't look the flashiest, they, they are amazingly productive in cutting down on time that your agents spend clicking through widgets and interfaces and, and extra pages that take a long time to load. Yeah? Yeah, we, we definitely could. I mean, that's, that's one of those that it's you have to do it from the security standpoint. That's where SSO comes in. But yeah, we have clients that want to pull in billing information or information from it, any system. You have Oracle, sure, we'll bring, it, we'll bring it in. And it doesn't need to actually modify any of the data in our database. We just will, when a widget opens up, it knows, oh, this is the ticket, this is the customer for this ticket. And if you have a way to tie back that customer to some other system, so like I previously said, oh, if you want to bring over the CRM GUID, that's a really nice way to say, Let's pull out the cases for this customer. And, and we do that for schools. We do that for other organizations that want to pull in information that they may or may not want us to, to host. So this will be a little bit more into a dive of how the, the portal actually works. What's behind the scenes? What does the portal, portal look like? And what our capabilities are? You own the portal. You you can customize it to however you want. Um, currently, we are using it's called a flexible portal. Basically, you add part of the HTML and whatever JavaScript and CSS you want. So this does take a little bit of a web dev to, to help out. We do have partners that can do it for you at, at very competitive prices. And since they don't have to host it, we, we do all the hosting for you. 
we really cut down on the cost. And you can show whatever other functionality you want. You may want to add tickers, stock tickers, or not, uh, extra stuff like a, a Twitter frame, all, all possible. And as you saw before, we have responsive design. So we have Business USA, we have ask.com, we've got OneDrive, we've got pretty much every one of our, I don't think there's any customers that don't use our portal. And you modify it just down below. You just upload some of the files you want, and that's just done during the development cycle, and then you're done. We host that too. So this will be a little bit more of a, a technical overview for those that are an implementation expert. You control what goes in the head of the HTML. You control what goes in the body. We just populate all the content in the middle. So this red stuff, we, this is just the data that pops up on different screens. So it might be the history for tickets, or it might be the knowledge base article, et cetera. But you get to add a bunch to this, and, and we host it all as well. So this is where this is where you add JavaScript. This is where you can customize it however you wish. Yeah. Sure. Um, I would work with a partner for now. In our future release, we're going to be having cases exposed. Uh, yes. Today, yes. Domain masking, simple ask. Can we make our portal have a URL that's support.mycompany.com or whatever you want? We do support it. So this is where some of the code, I don't want to go heavily into this, but the code is where you would make your modifications. And getting information from the portal. You get information right now. We're working on an API for the portal. It's not the same as the API that I talked about previously, which is Service Desk API, which is more like what CRM has. It's an agent perspective on the API. So this has, this shows some of the simple way, or simple or not simple sometimes, to retrieve information from the portal if you are doing the programming for it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about replicating the existing design. And I've hinted at this before, but, and, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's such an important aspect to our customers. So Chobani again. Website on the left, we do the support portal on the right. This can look, we just chose to make it look like theirs. They could have made a totally different branding. Intellos, again their main homepage on the left and the support portal on the right. We do the hosting. It's easy for the customers to access the information from the knowledge base. And we're adding, it's that content again. I showed previously, okay, we populate the content. This is on our servers. And this is what we populate. The rest of it is up to a partner or us to help you with in customizing or if you have um, one of your employees that's interested in making modifications, all available to you. Business USA, perhaps one of the prettiest portals that I've seen. This is our, our government at an action. If you are starting a company, if you're a small business owner, we, we may be interesting because the government's doing it themselves. So Business USA's main website on the left, which is in terms of contacting them or they have their own chat, they wanted to control certain parts of the experience, but they wanted us to control the knowledge, the FAQs. So we're on the right. We look at exactly the same except for the changes where they didn't want us to add. Okay, reporting. Information from our system that you can retrieve. So we have two different types of reporting. We have standard and premium. Premium uses um, SAP business objects, which is an incredibly powerful platform, which is why we use them. It's a little like Power BI, except it's, it can be a little bit more complicated, but actually just more powerful, too, in, in my opinion. In terms of what you can control, so standard is limited to simple graphs and charts. Um, it's free for all of our customers to use. While premium reporting business objects is an enterprise-grade tool, it's, it's easier than SQL, but it gives you pretty much the same level of power on what you can filter on, what you can query from our database. 
and you can control what it looks like. So premium reporting lets you schedule reports that get sent out as emails to your boss every night or every minute or however often you want to send it out. So we have our customers that say, you know what, I want to have a report build once and I, I don't want to have to export it to Excel every, every week and then reformat it and then we'll put the intern on it. No, once it's built, you can just schedule it up and it'll run whenever you asked it to schedule. First of every month, that works perfectly fine. Or you can do it longer or shorter. And it includes the, the relationships between data. So a customer is related to an account. And a customer has an SLA, they can inherit an SLA from an account. Or you can have customers that have their own tickets, so you can pull that in. And it's all the, the relationships are there. Um, good question. So we don't have Power BI integrated into Paratrim right now. Yeah. To CRM. Then you can totally use um, Power BI. Um, the nice thing with in, in that if it's once it gets over to CRM, yeah, feel free to use Power BI. Um, premium reporting is a little bit of a heritage from from when we were Paratrim. We're not part of Microsoft, but it's all web based. And it was one of the reporting tools that our team looked at. I think it was a couple of years back, so it was before Power BI was as advanced as it, as it is today. So available for all customers. So the standard reporting is simple charts and plots. You don't have a lot of flexibility in terms of customization, but there's a bunch of pre-built reports for you that are actually, a lot, probably like 80% of our customers are able to just, just get the information that they want. How are we doing on SLAs? Who's working on what tickets? And um, how are we doing for the day? What's the volume that we're getting for weeks, month, et cetera? It's not schedulable, but you can, you can get the information and export to Excel. GitHub. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's the next slide. Premium reporting. Um, I didn't show necessarily the best slide for it, but this is a customized, like, out-of-the-box report that we added on the right that matches up to what the standard reporting looks like. But it includes things like uh, you, you can look at the year-over-year -year volumes. That's actually one of my favorite reports to build with customers when they're asking, okay, how do, I, how do I work with the tool? It's impressive to see the drop in tickets and call volumes for customers that they, didn't even, they weren't aware of. So, for example, I was working with one of our customers the other day um, just for a quick call to show them how it works. And they had, I could actually see when they had releases of their software product on a six month basis. And when they had a bunch of problems, you see giant spikes in volumes that increased by two or 300% or more. On premium reporting, you can get any metric you want. You have an interesting workflow, it can retrieve that information, and you can create a report from it. I've seen reports that were built based off of different types of, um, how would I say? They have different weekly schedules than other companies. Or they want to know how are we doing during business hours versus non-business hours. All of that is tracked within our premium reporting tool. So you, can, you don't say, oh, our agent performed poorly. Well, okay, they were on vacation. That makes sense. Why they didn't respond to a ticket for a week. And they needed to offload it first before they left. Compatibility with major browsers, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox. And then the scheduling of reporting is, is hugely invaluable. Okay, we talked, uh, actually, any questions on reporting before I, I continue? No? Okay. We have, we work very heavily with GitHub. We're part of the, the one Microsoft that is publishing examples, code samples, um, anything to make your lives easier. Um, whether you're not the one that's implementing it, your partners are able to make it cheaper for you because they can use our code and it's, it's free for them to deliver with. very heavily into open source, and every couple of weeks we're releasing new updates. So single sign-on, we have sample code for that. Things like Portal to Case, which is integrating CRM with Paratrip for cases, it's on there too. We also have a library for working with our plugin on, uh, on the portal, which is just nice, simple JavaScript that does retrieval of data for you, so you don't have to worry about it as we're working towards a full-blown REST API for the portal. This is what's available today, and it lets you get a majority of the information that you're, you're probably going to want from the portal. Things like email, username, et cetera. If you want it to pop up on the screen different places, that's available.
we have a statically typed binary and the source code open to for our API. So instead of having to do a bunch of modifications of XML, nice, simple, clean C sharp code that you can work with. So this should be a nice um, ringing bell for those that integrate with Paratrooper and want to use an SDK and, and something that's supported. It also has built-in throttling, works with our, our servers very well. It, it takes some of the nuances and abstracts it away for you. And it also lets you do queries like uh, similar to how query expression works within CRM. We also have SSO code samples. So some of our customers that don't have a professional solution like ADFS or Shibboleth or Pinkfederate or even a homegrown um, standard, they can work with us using certificates and dead drop-offs and still let them get the benefit of single sign-on. So if your company didn't implement a giant identity management system because you wanted to get a product out the door and you have a, a totally custom login system, you can still log them in to our site. And that's a seamless experience that, and that's a huge benefit of, of Paratrooper's portal. Or they can log into the service desk as well. So again, it doesn't matter where you're logging in. And we can also bring information out of Paratrooper. So I want to know who's logged in at this site. I want to log in, log them into a widget or I want to log them into a separate forum. That works too, and it'll bring the information over, like username, email, um, API token if, it, if it's necessary. And, and that's configurable as well. We'll talk a little bit about support portals and the anatomy of them. Oh, these are the support portals for your help. If you have more questions after today, the conversation doesn't end here. We have a support portal for customers. We have a support team that's expanding with several different tiers for our customers. And this is also where we have our own knowledge base. So we use our own product to make sure that you can access information. And we know how our product works very well. We don't use someone else's product or expect you to just call in, although we do have a phone number for you to call if you do have problems. Um, we also show availability time and release information. So this is where we have the latest information, API documentation, any updates, you can also check the status of your ticket if you're signed in, so you can submit information to us. Oh, you can see how our product works and how we work with it. Also for partners, this, is, this has been a, a godsend recently. When I'm working with partners that have questions, we put information up on our own knowledge base. They can sign in, and I work with our partners through our, our portal. We can actually see, okay, what's the history of, of a response? Did I, was I holding you up or not? And you have access to see how, how I'm doing. You can rate me. You can see if I'm, if I'm doing a terrible job, my boss will know. So we're, we're here to help. So a little bit on best practices, how we deliver and how we, what we've learned as a customer service only organization and how we work with our customers. And this is something that, that some partners will be very privy to. So these are our critical su success factors to getting a customer rolled out and access to a solution that is integrated well and properly functioning with as few problems as possible. We focus a little, it's a, I don't want to say there's an implementation process that we always follow to the T that has a pretty name like Waterfall or Agile. We work with whatever process you use. So we actively manage projects. We, we have a dedicated implementation consultant, someone like me, who will be on the phone and available for email or call or through ticket um, to make sure that any questions you may have are asked. We focus on quality. We want to make sure that you don't have problems. And it's why we have very happy customers like Trebani or GSU or uh, Metrobank that are willing to come to Convergence and speak so highly of us. So when going towards a go live for Paratrooper, there's many different steps. And this is, for, this is pretty much agnostic to any system. We provision for you, and this is now an automated process, the account provisioning through, um, if you're buying CRM, Online, as an enterprise customer, you, I believe you get Paratrooper some of the licenses, and that'll automatically provision for you. Or you can request a trial, and it'll do the same thing. If there is an integration that needs to be added, or if you're working with a partner, there's project planning with the partner or with us. There will be system design and consultation, 
and then we'll go toward building up your portal, make sure that it's user acceptance, acceptance tested. And then if there's any di data that does need to be migrated, if you're not using um, single sign-on, then that's when that'll, that'll happen. You'll have the data migration. And then there's skinning and making sure that your agents know how to effectively work. Part of the consultation is making sure that your, your agents are comfortable and that they work effectively. And you know, okay, we need to cut down on the number of clicks. How can we do that? Through a widget or a tab or et cetera. Because some, some little things go a long way. So here's a prettier plot of that. Planning analysis, design, develop, test, deploy. Waterfall method. So I think security is perhaps one of the biggest warnings I'll, I'll leave off with today, is saying always make sure that your, your partner or customer or whoever is helping develop for you ha perhaps should watch this presentation first about how to implement with Parature. Because security is a massive, massive, massive thing that they, people always need to be worried about. And here's an example we had with one of, um, a, a team we were working with, not, no names or anything. They had a portal that was designed for, for a team, basically at Microsoft. Looked stunning, looked very nice. It had things like uh, document searching, and it, it, was, it was one of the slickest I'd seen. And we were curious about, okay, where, is, where, where are they getting this data exactly? Um, were they doing it from the portal, or, or where is this information coming from? On the bottom right, for the web devs out there, they were embedding the API token within the portal, which is as good a, as a CSR login for all intents and purposes. So from a security perspective, they luckily this wasn't rolled out to production or anything like that. We were still going through testing. But this is the importance of having someone that understands how, how security works and how data is moved across systems. And, and, and this is one of the, you just have to have care. It's not too hard. It's just you can't take the, the easier path, which is just embedding a token directly sometimes. So, any questions before I wrap up? Mm -hmm. uh, is Parager hosted at the same site as CRM? No, we have our own data centers right now. And where is that? Um, right now, that is in Northern Virginia. I can get you the exact locations if you're interested in that. It's just, just, it's just North America right now before we roll out internationally. So we are not, we are not hosted on the same servers as CRM right now. Any other questions? That's a good question, thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, certainly. We have many companies. Let's see, um, I don't know if I can mention all of them, but I can connect up with you afterwards to make sure that you, if you want to see, see it in action. I would go to the roadmap presentation. I can, I can actually, if you want to come up afterwards, I'll have to look it up, but Steve Klein, who's our, our product manager is, is giving a presentation for some of the initial integration, and he would love to answer questions on that, too. I think that'll be the best um, place to ask questions about exactly when the roadmap is going to converge between the two products. Because he'll be showing off some of the, the knowledge base integration between CRM and Parature, and that's, that's going to be the first step. And then there's also other integrations coming down the pipeline that I'm sure he'll be able to talk to and give actual like dates on and times on. Because we're on a six-month release cadence now. So, if he says it's not this release, it's probably going to be six months later. Yeah. I, I wouldn't wait. Um, the integrations that, or, or what our customers are using today, any of the integrations, those are going to be supported. So they're, <coughs> the integrations that I've shown with CRM are ones that will work post yeah, post there, we, we wanted to make sure that we didn't say, oh, let's go do something so out in the weeds, like direct database access or anything like that, that I know some customers were, were hit with with CRM. Um, these are supported integrations. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. Uh, not right now, no. And it's something that's, that's been a big ask. There's been some work towards extra functionality for the social, but there's no APIs for it right now. Um, yeah, we also added LinkedIn. And then um, I 
I'd have to check. I think we added one or two more. Um, but I know LinkedIn was recently released. And you can, um, sorry, I'll, I'll get to you in a second. You can also actually re directly respond. So that's one of the big benefits of our social monitor is that we allow you to respond directly via Facebook posts or Twitter. So Chobani, for example, is using us for our social monitor. And they, they live in our tool and can respond back instead of having to go to Twitter and then switch over to Facebook to respond to customers directly. And then they can escalate posts for Facebook and Twitter to tickets. And now they're part of our standard workflow. Oh, good question. So he's asking, can you sign into Paratr via Facebook or, or Twitter or some other login? We support Facebook right now. We support Google. Um, I think we support one or, one or two more that are OAuth-based. I think we, uh, Live ID. So we do support Live ID. So these are all just a drop down and then a couple of field mappings within the service desk. Uh, what was your question? Uh, question about and how it to CRM. Yeah. Good, good question. So um, first question is, how do we deal with licensing for portal users? We, we don't. It's based off of agency. So we don't, we don't care, frankly. Use it as much as you possibly can with as many customers as you possibly can. Don't, don't worry about if there's anonymous users versus logged in users. Um, how do we deal with moving data for, for Chobani specifically, for, for moving from Paratur to CRM. What happens is they're, they actually wanted to have their agents live in Paratur. So we were suggesting first, hey, well, we can create the case directly into CRM. And their agents actually said, no, we want to use Paratur because it's faster as a tier one tool. So they live within, their, their tier one does, to resolve and quickly respond back and forth through our portal using Paratur tickets. And then once it reaches a closed status, um, which we predefined, then nightly we move um, notes and comments and attachments, account contact over to, to CRM. And eventually we'll put that on GitHub. And how many CRM licenses do you have? What percentage of CRM do you have? Uh, the same as they had before, plus the, like a API user. Um, so the, the number of seats, so they were, they were in on-prem. I think they used 2011 still. Yeah, they used 2011 still. So it was the same number they had before. They have a couple hundred agents, but that was totally separate than what, what we have. We brought many of them over to Paratur, but not, not all of them. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we, can, we could do it through widgets. There's a couple different ways. Right now it's an integration, so it's not, that's gonna be on our roadmap to totally synchronize the two from like a database perspective. Right now it's a nightly process. So there's initial resolution within Paratur, and then there's follow-up for more complicated like, um, uh, how do I say it? Since we're customer service primarily from the Paratur side, but you may wanna keep track of the organization. So when you want to, um, Say it's an organization that says, I want a donation. I'm part of the Girl Scouts. That will be living within CRM. So that, that donation request, they don't need a resolution to be performed within Paratrue. There isn't this, oh, we need to help them solve a problem that they have a major issue. It's, hey, how do we reach out separately? Because that almost requires someone to go talk to them sometimes, because that's an organizational level reaching out to you. So that's where their CSRs live within CRM, is when they want to keep track of these relationships that they've had for years. Does that fully answer your question? I'm, I'm sorry if I... <laughs> yeah. Oh, certainly. There would definitely be, that's where I'd use like a widget. Um, you, you could totally have just a button that says escalate. <laughs> And it was, it was very specific to what they wanted, wanted to do. So that was a, very much a use case 
specific scenario, that Chobani, uh, that's their own current workflow that they wanted, and they defined it for us. So if you said, I want to own a button that happens right then and there, and I don't want to have to wait, yeah. Um, I feel like that's very company specific. You could have, we do have our own SLAs. They're separate from CRMs right now. Um, you could synchronize them, but that would be an integration. Right now, they're not directly intrinsically linked between the systems. So you could have SLAs that are, there. you would build that relationship between a ticket in Paratrue and a case in CRM, and then you'd pull that, you'd surface that information back in. And I would do that all through a widget so you can perform workflow actions on a case within CRM or, or within Paratrue. And I would actually, if you're really wanting a synchronization of SLAs, I would just move the case directly over to, to CRM in the first place and have your agents live there. If, if you have a large workflow that's already built out, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother rebuilding it. Just use what you have. Sure. Uh, mm. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Let's connect up afterwards if, if you don't mind me uh, getting your contact information. Because I'm not a big licensing guy. I'm more of a solution architect, so I deal with the implementation. And there's, there's definitely some stuff going on in terms of licensing. It, it changes pretty much monthly. So... Yeah, sure. Um, USD 2015, there are some, some components like knowledge base is, is implemented into USD 2015. I don't know if it's an extra package. I would, I would go ask the booth because the USD team will know the most. I'm, I'm probably two steps away from the USD team from exactly what's built out of their core packages. And I know every team that uses USD has their own custom plugins. Mm -hmm. um, to wrap up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Uh, not today, as you can tell. The, hear the deep sigh. Uh, not yet. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly when, sadly. It's one I push for daily, so. Um, I'll wrap up and then just so if, if people are, you know, I'll still a ask and answer questions up here, but I wanna make sure if anyone was, was done, I'm, I'm pretty much done with the presentation, so I wanna make sure that, that I don't hold you up. Um, let, me, let me finish this off real quick and then we can go back to questions, because that's what I'm here for. Um, so the takeaways, hopefully you know a little bit more about our key capabilities of, of Parature. We are pushing very heavily portal, knowledge, and, and ticketing and our, our chat functionality as well. Supported scenarios, we have APIs, we have single sign-on, we have widgets and tabs, we have reporting, we have quite a bit of functionality, and as time progresses, we are, we're suggesting what you can do today so you don't have to wait to work with Paratrue, because there are massive benefits working with Paratrue today. And we wanna make sure you know, okay, this will be supported in the future, like knowledge within CRM and Paratrue, Definitely look at the keynote because it's going to show it today. It's going to show how do I use and curate knowledge base articles from CRM for Parature so our portal can show it, but then I, my agents can still live within Parature. And that'll, that's, a, that's an integration that they're going to be showing off today. And that's going to be planned for our next release of CRM, if not Parature. Um, real world examples, I showed you some of our customers that are using it today with, with great success despite not having database level migrate or integrations that are working. So don't be scared to work with us while, while we're still working with CRM. Because there's, we're, we're, there's a reason we're part of Microsoft, and that's because we have true tangible benefits in the short term and the long term. So we can go back to questions and answers. I'm, I'm happy to answer any other questions you may have. Otherwise, thank you for coming in, and I really appreciate you all showing up and, and sticking through with the presentation.